will be two presentations, two discussions. Um, first, we're going to start with Mr. Ali, then followed by Mr. Wiswais. Um, and later, there will be 15 minutes for question and answers. Meanwhile, you can type in your questions if you want to, or you can just join in in the last question, whatever you have. So for the first, um, I would like to explain, a uh, bit present, uh, introduce Mr. Ali. So Ali Said is from Pakistan, but he has been working extensively in Australia and China too. He has quite an extensive work experience in MRF and recycling uh, company, and also was involved in market analysis of Pakistani, Australian, and Chinese re recycling businesses and supply chain of waste streams. Uh, currently, he is working on plastic recycling and also trying to develop uh, medical issues, devices, sort of a business in Pakistan called Orberus uh, Waste Management uh, Company. So, over to you, Ali. Ali, can you hear us? Nina, can you unmute Ali? Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for the introduction. You did a much, much better job than I would have done. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I've been uh, working in Pakistan uh, for the past two years. I moved back here from Australia and I uh, worked in Turkey and China and um, Australia a bit on the waste management side of things. Um, and also the medical device side of things. Um, thank you for joining in, and I hope I do a good job. Um, so she's uh, kindly invited me to um, contribute to this discussion. Um, the topic is facilitating waste management through information data systems. Um, and I will just go through what I have for you guys today. One second, how do I close this? Um, feel free to jump in and ask any questions. I haven't made a question slide, um, but do jump in uh, wherever you feel would like me to. And also, Shiza, if I'm running over time, uh, do give me a little prompt. Um, oh, sure. So just quickly, waste management, that's all we're here for, and data. Um, so just quickly, two main points that I'm going to go through. So I'm going to go through the sort of a Pakistani-centric context of waste management, data, and how data is important to us and sort of where we stand as a country with data and the waste management um, sphere of things. So what does it mean for Pakistan, um, waste management and its data, and the data we have, and also what does data just generally mean for any business? So quickly, what is data? Uh, the definition, according to the dictionary, is facts and statistics collected together for reference analysis. For me, personally, it's more fun facts and statistics because um, this helps me sort of understand whatever I'm looking at a bit better, whether it is the medical device sector of things, whether it's plastics that I've worked in, or waste management. So what does it mean for businesses? Uh, for me, just one second. For me, for data, uh, most of you guys probably use Uber, Cream. Um, analytics is the main portion. Um, it just helps you sort of look forward, look back, uh, assess yourself, um, if you're setting up a business, it helps you identify gaps. Uh, so for me, it's really become the core of business. Uh, lots of things I've done, I've just done heaps of research, looked at data, looked at gap analysis for something, and then move forward with an opportunity. Um, how does data apply to waste? So for us, uh, primarily this is looking at waste management in general, uh, quantifying waste generation, logistics, primarily getting waste from A to B uh, is trucking, logistics, and then also the needs for disposal and treatment. So that's sort of the end cycle of waste management, where we, through data, are able to assess how we can uh, use what we have or our footprint, our waste footprint, and um, how we try and fix it or what sort of disposal and treatment options we have. And because of data, we can we can sort of assess the opportunity and the situation and move forward with it. So again, data not only in waste management, but sustainability as a whole, um, it's becoming a massive uh, massive issue around the world where pollution levels, environmental levels, uh, tree cutting, 
um, has, has posed issues and for a long time we didn't have enough data. But because of data now we're able to assess things much, much quicker. So for me the power of data really is the core of everything. Um, how we're able to identify, measure something and move forward with it. Um, and over, over time sort of pick up some trends. Um, okay, so here's a blank screen for you. What can you tell me about the information presented? Is there anything you can do with the information I've just presented you on the slide? Hello? Uh, I can't see anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but nothing. Yeah, everybody was muted before. Yeah, it's fine. So the slide's not working, or we just don't know what's going on? <laughs> yeah, every, you can repeat your question. The slide was working before. Everybody was muted before, yeah. yeah. So, so for me, um, I have placed an empty slide over here, because for me that's sort of what we're doing in Pakistan to a certain extent, where we're trying to move forward in the industry. Where we just don't have, we don't have a I think it's better to mute everybody. Um. Yep, so I just want to give a quick feedback so nobody can see anything. So for me right now in Pakistan, because we are in sort of infancy stage of waste management, just like a blind screen, we're sort of starting to move forward uh, without having a clear picture of anything. Uh, for me, I've presented you with no data because uh, the slide's empty. And that's sort of how we're moving forward at the moment. Um, and that's not how it should be. And just following this, I'll show you sort of the power of data um, and why data is so important. Um, as you can clearly see with the information I've provided you, it sort of does nothing for you. It doesn't help you in any way. You can't analyze the slide. You can't tell me what I'm trying to tell you. So in Pakistan, for a population of 210 million, um, according to the theoretical global average of 0 0.65 kgs per day per capita, um, we have a certain number of waste. But what else can you derive from this? So I've given you a population and I've given you a theoretical waste uh, production day. Um, so basically, theoretically, I get a number, which is roughly 25 million to 45 million based on the different uh, income groups. Um, this, again, is a theoretical number. We don't have actual data on what's going on in the country, and that's why we're sort of shooting in the dark. So the type of data we do have is we've got 25% recyclables, 95% of that's recycled, 5% of the 95% is dumped. Another data point, 45% of it's openly burnt. Another data point for you is there's one scientific landfill in the country. There's two active waste collection companies in one of the six major cities. There's a total population of 210 million. There is a contribution of probably 1% private waste revenue coming in to support our waste management industry and 99% government funding towards the waste management in industry to collect, dispose and sort our waste. Out of that, for the one of the major cities, we've got a budget of about 100 million US dollars to collect and dispose 6,500 tons of waste a day. And there's 11 million people in the city. Now, if you could unmute everyone, I'm happy to take everyone's input on this. So what have I primarily, guys, what have I primarily, what I can't understand now, sorry, there's background noise. Yeah. Is that, is that a response? Ah, what is that? <laughs> And it maybe it's better uh, if we have uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not going to work. Okay, no worries. Uh, and uh, you know what? Maybe um, we can. Uh, you can ask the people to write down like some. No worries. Yeah, I can have a. I'm happy to do that. So just have a chat.
um, just get some of your answers. So compared to the previous slide, what can I show you on here? What is this that I've presented you with? So I've got tons of recycled waste, correct? Diversion rate, volume's going to landfill. Very accurate, Matt. Anyone else? In relation to the topic of our conversation, what, is, what are these? So they're all, they're all data points that have been collected formally, informally. They've been collected by me. They've been collected by They've been collected by the agencies, they've been collected by the ministry. So what this is, is a collection of data points. Now, these are the most accurate data points I've got in the past five, six years um, of the waste management sector. Now, what this does allow me to do is identify uh, holes, identify gaps, and then be able to provide solutions. So 25 million to 40 million is the theoretical number of waste collected a year. We don't yet have a complete baseline survey, so I can't give you a very nice canvas of what's going on. 25% recyclables is based on statistics from import data. And then 95% recycled is an assumption that our trends are very similar to India's trends. And then the 5% dumped on top of that is based on my own uh, recycling and recycling rates of other people. Um, and how much waste is there is. 40% open burning. So this is another data point, and it's a very eye-opening data point, and this is why data is important within the waste management sphere, is 40% of open burning. That solely illustrates to us that there's no end solution in Pakistan so far. One scientific la uh, landfill in a country which has a population of 210 million, so either this data point illustrates to us the landfill is awesome and it's huge and we can collect everything and dump it there and it's fantastic. Why it just shows just a massive lack of landfills. And the other thing, 210 million population. I know in Australia there's at least 67 waste management companies op operating. Uh, Clean Away, Weda, there's a few smaller ones that I've been in touch with. But in Pakistan, out of the six major cities, and we've got mega, mega cities, Lahore has two active waste management companies. Uh, the government uh, waste management company is acting, but it's not as efficient as the other two that have come in. Apart from that, there's smaller ones. Uh, but again, this sort of illustrates to us the lack of collection. Then, private and public revenue. Um, Another data point for you guys, 1% is private, 99% is government funding. Uh, a few of the other case studies in other developed countries, um, the people are taxed on their waste footprint. They've got council fees, a waste levy, uh, they've got waste revenue they've got to hand over. So this data point for us sort of illustrates how the government's funding a lot of this and that places lots of burden on our budgets and it's sort of taking taxpayer money away from other things like education and uh, and growth that could happen and something that could be privatized a bit more. So we're just comparing 99% to 1% and probably a reallocation. So that's primarily what I wanted to point out from you guys. Uh, Osman said 27% waste is recycled in Pakistan. Yep, fair enough. So numbers here and there. Um, by informal and formal sector, fair enough. There's a major need for scientific landfills. Very accurate, view of 14. Uh, there's one landfill site in Pakistan. Yep, correct, in Lahore. What do you mean by scientific landfill here? What are the parameters qualified for scientific landfill? Very good. So a scientific landfill is one that's properly engineered. Um, it's got a non-permeable surface, so leachate water doesn't go into our waterways. Um, so far, there's open dumping in Pakistan, which is literally you take trash in a waste truck and you just throw it away. Um, there's no... There's no proper uh, disposal treatment of the waste. It just sort of sits there uh, for scavengers to come through, pick apart whatever they feel is valuable, and the rest sort of decomposes, and there's leachate water primarily affecting the surrounding area. So scientific landfill, in short, is something that's planned out, whereas in Pakistan, lots of the open sites are just not planned out. Um, the waste comes, and it gets dumped around, 
and on the street there's lots of burning outside the parameters of the city. Now, this is sort of what we've been able to pick up out from a few data points um, compared to the previous slide where we had nothing. So we're in this sort of phase where we're able to make some conclusions about the situation in Pakistan, but not a lot of conclusions, and we don't have a nice sort of framework to work with of what's necessary and what's really happening. So I've got good data for Lahore, the rest of the cities still work in progress. So let's assume I have all the data in the world for Australia, for Malaysia, for China, for India, for Pakistan. What can we do with it? So within data, you've got all the data. There's three main analytical points that I've used and I'm working on uh, developing further. Um, with data, you can sort of assess the present, the past, and also the future needs. And this is done through predictive analysis. So you're predicting future events. If any of you guys have tried buying some stocks, try and reallocate your funds, uh, try and make some hedges or bets on your own personal assets, you'd be sort of looking at predictive analytics for a lot of the Pakistanis. Uh, listening to me right now, perhaps in the past 12 months, you've made some predictions about the dollar going up, going down, playing with the currencies, because um, I sure have. Um, then there's descriptive analytics, which is the preliminary stage. So it's where we're summing up historical data, and this is where Pakistan's at primarily right now. In Australia and other countries, you can probably predict sort of the tonnage of waste coming uh, much better per city, per council, per household. Um, you can look at landfill ex exhaustion rates, what you can do, uh, what you can't do. Whereas in Pakistan right now, we're really in an infancy stage. So for us, we need to work towards getting a full set of data. But if we did have all the data in the world, let's say, um, what can we do with it? So data helps us with our decision making. So just like a lot of you guys have, uh, have mentioned here in the chat. What have I done? Uh, a lot of you guys over here have mentioned in the chat uh, that there's only one landfill site. So based on the data point, you've come to that conclusion. From that, we can make a decision or we can present some data uh, to make a decision we about perhaps. See, we can see your um, screen. So could you share it again? Uh, which screen, sorry? Yeah. Ooh. How do I do that? So there's an option maybe on your upper bar. I'm so sorry. I must have clicked something. Could you yeah, yeah, one and second. explain? I'm so sorry. Yeah, it is. It's fine. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I clicked something. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It's fine. Though. Play from time slide. So sorry. Okay, so just like, just like the previous slide, just tapping onto what I said before, just the previous slide, I've given you some data points and you've come to some conclusions where Usman's mentioned there's one landfill site, uh, we don't have enough landfills, um, there's 25% recycling, should that be more, should that be less? It helps us evaluate how to move forward and make some decisions. Now this is where the Pakistani government's at right now, they're trying to make some decisions, they don't have all the data. Now if you're making decisions, uh, like lots of the developed countries or developing countries are trying to move forward in. Uh, decision making, uh, fantastic. We've set up a plan, we've got some information, we've got data, really good assessment of things. Based on our data, um, how do we move forward? It leads to execution. Um, but that can only happen if we've got enough data on the topic and somebody's able to make assumptions, analyze that, and come to a good conclusion. Insights. So I'm going to just move across from my. I don't move this away, man. Move aside from illustrating how important data is. Um, now, for waste data in Pakistan, what we do have, I've mentioned that we're still in infancy. Uh, we're working towards gathering more data. The ministry is working on it at the moment. Uh, there's a very good baseline data survey, baseline data survey done in 2005, but um, just the previous slide mentioned, we've got data, we've done some decision making, so Pakistan did a nice survey in 2005, got 
lots of hints into the waste management sector, but the execution. So since 2005 to now, only Lahore is able to collect and dispose of their waste. Apart from that, the execution phase has been really weak. So you have all the data in the world. You've done some fantastic decision making. You've got the new prime minister coming in, Imran Khan. He's making some massive decisions. Pakistan is looking up, but how about the execution? So since 2005, execution has been really poor. Um, in Pakistan, there was a census done in, I think, 1998. Hopefully I'm correct. Otherwise, it's 1997. And then one's been done in 2017. So we've got only two time series to compare. So that's a lack in our data. And then there has been some very good waste characterization studies done in 2014. Um, of some of the cities. So that's just me trying to illustrate that. Yes, we don't have all the data in the world. We're working on it. But these are a few things that we've looked at. And that's where most of our decision making is coming from at the moment. But there's a dire need in a, a nice baseline survey. Well, I hope ISWA can help. And that's why I'd like you guys to engage in and sometime also pop into Pakistan um, and contribute your expertise. So what we're lacking right now is the data. So came through in 2004. Five, decision-making was made to, to an extent, but the execution was poor. So the three uh, steps are very, very crucial uh, leading into each other. Now, um, got all the data. What are the roadblocks we have? So currently, financial frameworks, it's just not in place. So since 2005, when the UN and JICO, uh, a Japanese agency, if I'm not wrong, came in, made a beautiful report and survey, um, the execution didn't move forward because our financial frameworks weren't in place. Lots of the people still don't understand the industry. And that's why the availability of data is just so crucial within the country. Um, understanding that waste is more than just something that you throw in a bin and the bin just vanishes um, to some dumb site. So we've got all the data in the world. There's some execution. Financial frameworks have been made. Uh, we've got bottlenecks in our policy and then implementation, the execution phase. So that's what we're working towards currently. The climate change agencies really uh, move forward and push forward. Um, and so we're working on the policies, as everyone would know, probably far more than me. Uh, there's a massive time lag for policy. Um, every change is painful and it takes some time. And the implementation. So once you've got step one, the data, the decision making, and the execution sort of ready, we can have some more implementation. Now, leading on from implementation, I've got two really quick, I hope I'm not taking up too much time. Uh, I've got some two really quick, uh, what do you call it? Uh, case studies, not case studies, just observations of what has been going on. Um, waste collection logistics in Lahore have been working really, really well in the past two years. They've moved up from 60% to 80%. How that happened was a, a push from the top. So that was more policy and implementation and a bit more supervision and also through data. They tagged their bins, they tagged their vehicles. It led to 13 billion rupees being saved in two years. Um, it led to tracking uh, employees. They're able to collect their tonnage and that's probably the most accurate data we have for Pakistan is from Lahore is due to tagging of vehicles, tagging of the dump sites, tagging of bins, which has led us to uh, get a good grasp of how much waste is coming through and what sort of future projects we need for the treatment phase. Uh, the second is um, lots of the Pakistanis in the group would know of this. Um, it's, become, it's been a bit of a controversy, obviously, but it's, it's a good, um, good sort of point to bring up on how data can help us. Uh, hospital waste tracking and compliance. So we've got a massive population. There's lots of people that get sick um, because of poor sanitation. There are there is lots of hospitalizations and and sickness that gets around. Um, so hospital waste is big. Lahore and Punjab, Lahore in particular, creates about 17 tons of medical and hazardous waste. Now uh, this was getting treated by an individual contractor. The contractor had some fun for a while, made some money on the side. I'm not going to go into it because of how touchy the subject is. Now, because the vehicles were tracked and they had locators on them, uh, because slowly the authorities were able to calculate the capacity per day of what they could incinerate and treat, um, this led to the compliance phase where 
through data and understanding the numbers, uh, the authorities were able to find out that they weren't doing a good job and they were, they were being shady, to put it lightly. So it helps with compliance where the authorities are able to track the data, understand what's going on and going wrong without having to constantly supervise. So that's primarily where data can help us most. So the, those two little dot points I wanted to share of what's happened and how data has helped us. Um, one is through increasing operational efficiency and saving money. The other is through compliance and finding out the nitty gritty details that most people outside the waste management space do not understand as well. What do I have next for you? Yeah, a little bit of a joke. Hopefully you can laugh, I can't hear you. But yeah, don't have a code for you. And then our final point. So one's man's, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Heard this over, over a lifetime now. Um, so data is helping us. Data helps us to build a map to reach the treasure. Uh, we need data points in order to formulate the best route. And this is what Pakistan really needs right now, um, is to be able to have really good data um, and work. Oh, just one second. Have really good data. Um, to be able to map out the current practices, what's happening, what's not happening, to be able to formulate a strategy, which helps, um, the data helps with the uh, decision making and then the end result of implementation. Now, just quickly before I leave you guys, uh, and sorry for the next speaker, one man trash, another man's treasure. The informal sector is very efficient, uh, able to find this treasure because they've been able to put a value on the recyclables. However, it's the organics that's the biggest issue and why as a whole we need data to be able to provide better solutions on a more industrial and commercial scale. Uh, thank you very much for listening in. Hope I contributed and enhanced your knowledge about Pakistan. Thank you, Ali. It was an interesting presentation. Um, well, um, I think the questions, well, I have a couple, but I would like to leave it for the question and answer session. That would be last like 10 minutes dedicated to question and answer. And we can like lead on to second presentation, if that's all right with you, Ali. I hope. <laughs> so for, for the second presentation, it will be by Mr. Vishwesh Bangalore, I hope I have pronounced uh, his name correctly. So he is basically from India, also a YPG member of ISWA. So he is um, basically an IT consultant at a famous company called Infosys in India. But at the same time, he is a co-founder and CEO of Waste Smartin in Bangalore. It, it's a set up ICT solution based for urban waste towards better driven governance, administration, and management for men and material. So he has successfully done his pilot project on waste smartening and collecting with door to door waste collection and segregation and its monitoring processes. So over to you, Wish Wish. Uh, hi, all. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jessa, for this opportunity. And uh, thanks to IPG as always. And, uh, I think, Richard, uh, could you I speak a bit higher? There's like some disturbance or. Uh, is, is this looking better? Yeah, yeah, it's better. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thanks to and thanks to IPG. Uh, always been, uh, you know, projected. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not a full-time waste management professional, but uh, I think uh, working with you guys and interacting with you guys actually, you know, makes me feel uh, so much involved in, uh, in the system and uh, the waste management. Uh, so. Uh, just quickly, let me get started with the presentation. And uh, yeah, the, I mean, as for introductions, you know, thanks. Uh, so, guys, I have two jobs. So, I, I'm not sure if I've done a great job with my uh, uh, IT profession, where I, you know, that gives me bread and butter. But I, I really feel we've done, I've done a lot of work in waste management. So, uh, let me just present. Hopefully, uh, you find it interesting and see see a lot of lot of data that's uh, come out of it. So, uh, firstly, thanks to Ali as well because uh, he's very rightly set the context for me about the importance of data. Uh, that's, uh, I, I don't need to touch upon that at all. So, um, you know, this startup has been running since the past uh, two and a half uh, to almost three years now. Uh, it's, uh, we wanted to focus 
on trying to collect data which is digitized and authentic. So, uh, and uh, you know, actually, aggregation of source is one thing which causes a lot of problem in waste management. Uh, it helps you sort of uh, streamline your uh, downstream supply and value chains. So, that is something that needs a lot of emphasis and importance. So, the focus uh, when we started of waste management was to get data, also focus on segregation. We did want to get uh, of waste related data as well, but then we never really got funded. So, this is all I have now. So, uh, uh, this is a, a typical scenario in Bangalore in India. Right? Uh, people, you know, never used to wear helmets. And uh, later on, uh, you know, the, uh, the local uh, cops, they started levying spot penalties, right? And then that's when people got uh, converted from, you know, going, uh, not to even the billion prioritizing helmets. So that's the kind of transformation we, we've seen. So what sort of works in an Indian context at times is more of the thing, right? People need to be monitored stringently and, uh, uh, you know, more than safety, it's more of the penalties that people want you know, adopt these uh, helmets. Okay. So, yeah, um, Race Martin was actually born uh, at a hackathon. It's a startup which was born at a hackathon. So, uh, Reimagine Race was the hackathon, and uh, uh, which focused on, on uh, empowering the life of waste collectors and, you know, transform them. So, Chris here, uh, he actually runs a, a recycling uh, center, or basically a dry waste collection center. All the recyclables uh, come into uh, his uh, setup, so it's an uh, application from where he sorts them and further uh, sends it away to, uh, uh, you know, the bigger, the larger aggregators or the recyclables. So, so which uh, we're sorry to interrupt, but I think there are some sound issues. Uh, can't hear you very well. That's could you fix that a bit or maybe speak a bit louder? Is this better, guys? Um, not really. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. Sorry guys. Uh, there's a lot of background noise here. Mhm. Hopefully. We can wait. Yeah. Slightly better. Yeah, a bit better. But could you just speak a bit louder, maybe? Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh. So this. Uh, the Waste Martin startup was born at a hackathon, uh, which was organized by Waste Impact Trust. And uh, the hackathon was focused on empowering the life, empowering and transforming lives of uh, waste pickers waste or waste collectors like uh, Krishna. Krishna is one of the co founders uh, of Waste Martin as well. So that was the whole uh, theme of the hackathon, bringing them into you know an entrepreneurial right? And it got funded by social. Partners India for our first uh, point, they, they gave us a CC grant, right, and this is the rest of India. So, so these are some of the problems that we were trying to uh, look at the uh, factor. So, there's something called the two-win and one system mandated in Bangalore in India. So, it was mandated somewhere in December 2015, but then uh, we still see that there is, uh, you know, uh, lack of wasn't effective segregation. So PMP is the municipality here, and uh, even they're struggling to achieve this. And uh, people always complain that you know the waste collectors mix the waste and carry it out. Uh, you know they are segregated, and waste collectors complain that you know people don't uh, segregate waste properly. So we are really not able to track where the issue is. It's become a chicken and egg problem. It's been a perennial issue throughout the years, and uh, we've not really not been able to sort. This out. And then uh, black spots. Uh, so un unauthorized garbage dumps are called black spots here in Bangalore. So uh, that's another challenge. And of course, landfill. Uh, we we had almost two landfills closed until now because of protests from villagers. So uh, that's another. Uh, guys, I hope the audio is fine. Um. Yeah. Sort of. So, um, I'm, I'm sorry. This is the best I can do for now. I did. That's fine. All right. So uh, basically, dealing with ineffective segregation, uh, there is a lack of waste collector feedback system, 
and the huge quantities faced with uh, negligible resource recovery. And yeah, I think I don't need to touch upon in the slides because Ari has already dealt with it. So, uh, what the, whatever data that we get is not always digitized and authentic, and uh, it's not a source of generation of data. So, this is our whole uh, system, our door to door collection and monitoring solution. Uh, so, the solution comprises of three primary components, which is one, the basic one, the WS collect, uh, a certain app, and the right? And uh, our setup is a, is a one time generation of a QR code at every household or every road. And then, um, Select your uh, over, you get a notification on the citizen app when the uh, direction ve uh, vehicle arrives for uh, the collection grounds. And uh, the waste collector who is equipped with a smartphone, right, he scans this per code. Uh, we have developed a rating system on a scale of five in the two and one bag guideline. So the waste collector officially examines the waste, uh, checks, uh, checks for the quality of segregation, provides this rating. Uh, takes a photographic evidence and moves on to the next house. So I'll show you a video process as well. So all data comes onto our back end, and then this uh, is also set back as a citizen for a, a two-way feedback system, right? And then uh, this data can be used by municipalities probably and uh, probably the local resident welfare associations, so that you know they can uh, take the so yeah, CSA awareness or um, on those lines, right? So uh, let me quickly show you a video of the collection. Uh, uh, so this collector scanning your professional scan with your code. There is like a lot of disturbance in your voice, like maybe because of the internet connection, I guess. Um, could you explain the video again, if you don't mind? Sure, sure, I'll do that. Yeah, Vishwas, maybe uh, it will be better if you don't play the video and you just talk it through, and then we send out the presentation with the video, and people could have a look at home. I think it will be better. Uh, Sure, right. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, I'm done with the video. Uh, so we can, anyways, refer it later. And on the citizen app as well, there is something that I can quickly show. Uh, an option to track the user. So uh, that's one feature that's available. And people can view their individual uh, ratings, right? Uh, so what was the been provided by the collector? That's uh, all available for people to track. Right, the date and time of the collection is logged when the basically scans the QR code, uh, and they can access the image of the evidence that these clickers click as well. Right, and this is another quick thing. So there's something called a community standing graph. So when we, you know, go in there, and you can see the household numbers listed on there. Uh, exactly, the average quality of segregation of those categories listed on there. So. Um, Actually, we were able to identify that peer pressure or community pressure worked in this case. So, number 60 was segregating. They, uh, looking at them, sort of 58, 59 that weren't doing so well, uh, came up to this. So that's why you can see that the segregation levels are slightly uh, lower than um, household 60. So, uh, we have this kind of data available as well. So, moving on to the slide. Um, uh, so, this is the idea that uh, was chosen for the pilot, right? So, this was done in uh, Domlur Ward 112 in Bangalore. 
And these were the streets where the pilot was uh, so it's a very small scale pilot as you can see. Uh, we covered 52 uh, households uh, sp uh, spanning 257 counties. So the pilot launch was in May uh, uh, 2017 and uh, mid May 2017. And then initially we had only 80 QR codes in and then we added QR codes at multiple uh, points. So we did a three and a half mile pilot entirely. So what I'm going to be showing you uh, going forward is all data points, I mean, all the results from uh, the dashboard. Okay. We have uh, we have the data available across individual categories. So I've just beautified it a bit to uh, show you the impact. So you can see that five and so an admin as soon as it comes onto a dashboard, right? All he needs to ensure is it's as light as possible. So when you have Five, four, three. You have good quality aggregation, right? Uh, it's it's rated on a scale of five, and lighter as a color across individual categories. So you can clearly see that five and four stars have gone up. So when I say four stars, in case of organic waste, it's purely segregated organic waste given in a green bin without a plastic bin liner, uh, and uh, that's uh, and that is just having traces of say not traces, maybe a, a chocolate wrapper or two. So that would be four star segregation, and without that would be five star segregation in case of wet, uh, in case of wet waste or the organic waste. So yeah, you can see really you see that these values have gone up across uh, categories. The ratios have gone up across the categories between May seventeenth uh, and August second year. And yeah, we we've been able to identify that you know people can learn to segregate perfectly within ten to twenty one days. So we have everything of the same, and we have uh, you know the data points uh, reflecting that um, you know day one uh, this is this is uh, you know mixed waste that was given out in a plastic bin, uh, sorry plastic bag. Day two was again uh, organic and recyclables mixed. Day three they felt they were playing it smart by just keeping two bags. There was a plastic bag for the organic waste. So day six finally a bin appears in plastic. Uh, so it's still with a plastic bin liner. Day seven, there's still a plastic liner, and day nine onwards, it's near perfect segregation. So this is kind of uh, data that we've been able to collect. So it's two bin, one bag, which is a system mandated in Bangalore. That's sort of achieved. And uh, we did not have to do any micromanagement when it came to multiple dwelling units. So in India, we do have properties where there are you know, multiple floors. There's the owner and there are multiple tenants uh, who occupy the uh, you know, property. So uh, what we did was link the individual uh, house to their property tax identifiers. We'd look to the permission of the local uh, uh, municipality to provide us that data. So, and even the commissioner said that if we can do this sort of a linking, it would be better for them to levy penalties. So uh, when we did this, uh, we just told the owner that it's this is on them to make sure that their tenants segregate, right? So that is something that worked as well. We can see that, you know, for this particular household, uh, this is 060, we were able to get, uh, you know, a near perfect segregation across all days. So it, it was a cumulative rating given, right? So this is how uh, the owners said that their tenants were giving out organic waste. No plastic, no plastic bin line, nothing. Uh, in, given out in a green bin, just pure organic waste, right? and and recyclables as well. They were given out in individual bags, so that was another plus. And you can also see on a dashboard two additional because one is yellow and uh, black. So yellow identifies those houses which are non-compliant or those houses which aren't handing out waste to the authorized collection team, right? So you can see the number of data points here. Uh, they are like a lot. They've drastically reduced to the end, end of the pilot, and uh, you can see the number of black. These these are the households that aren't giving out. I mean, so, uh, aren't giving out segregated waste. So it's basically unsegregated. So it's, it's like a black mark. So you can see that count has gone down as well. Uh, uh, hello, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, so we can quickly uh, see all these uh, data, all the data on, on a map interface as well, right? So individual houses have been geotagged. So you can see, uh, you know, a bird's eye view of how segregation patterns are. And we can see, that, you know, the black spots here are those which are unsegregated uh, waste, and then yellow here represents no waste. You can see that uh, there are darker areas here. So probably these houses are still not segregated properly. And it can be this data can be used uh, use for local residents as well as residents to go give them a um, an awareness session on you know, how to segregate better properties, or probably even the municipality can take up that effort, right? So you can see clearly uh, there's a reduction between May 17th and August 2nd. Quick visual comparison to those results. Right? Then uh, we were also able to track those people who are not compliant at all. Right? So uh, there was one particular household never handed out waste to us. But what was happening with this? So apparently the person who runs this bakery uh, right next to this household, he's a person who lives here, right? So he used to, and uh, for the pilot, he had to collect only residential properties, so we touch the commercial, right? So uh, when when the you know uh, when we did go for collection, we were, we had to you know provide data that there was waste, right? And these how uh, he was just mixing his waste along with the uh, his commercial establishment, that is the bakery commercial waste, and uh, handed out to the municipality. So this kind of data is available as well. Uh, we have, you know, we ha I, I mentioned about black spots in our uh, problem statements, right? So there were you know, a lot of empty sites, vacant sites being misused in India, and that's primarily for dumping uh, waste, right? So this household that had an empty site outside it uh, never used to go out waste that often. So you can see no waste coming in uh, for most number of days. You know, unsegregated as well, you know, not, not, not number of days. And the request was hardly so uh, so where, where was the waste going? So we, we were able to identify that some of these households did not, uh, you know, uh, handle the waste first, but used to pump off at these unauthorized locations. So based on their zero and proximity to Probably the black spots. We were able to identify that these could possibly be these uh, culprits. Uh, culprits is too hard word, but yeah, environment is uh, you're, you're being a culprit. Yeah. So this is the data to support the same as well. And we were also, you know, not able to streamline the collection process in, uh, in the beginning. For example, recyclable waste is a bi-weekly collection as mandated by the municipality. So all the so you can see that the data available across all data. Right uh, during the beginning of the project. and uh, all that the waste had to do was tell people that look, uh, if you are handing out your waste to dry waste to your recycle stores on a non-authorized, we can and we will still collect it, no problem. But we'll also collect data that you are handing out your waste on an unauthorized. Way. So that was able to streamline, you know, our collection. So we were able to get uh, a bi-weekly collection possible. So you can see data only for Saturdays and uh, Thursdays. So that's another thing that was possible. And of course, the collectors for their compliance, we had their GPS logs, their time and location logs at all times. So their date of collection, start and end time, and the total time taken, all this was being back. And the waste collector had to provide us all this data for payments at the end of the day. So that's how, and, and we paid them slightly marginally rather than what the municipality would uh, pay them. So that's how the whole model works. So yeah, I think I've touched upon all these points. They're all available here for you to go through later when the presentation is shared. And, and uh, but one thing that definitely I'll touch upon is the social impact on these workers. So uh, we made their job a little more cooler. You know, they've been treated with more just, just because they have a smartphone now and they have power in their hands to rate people. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's given them more interaction with the citizens to learn on the waste management and um, what primarily worked for us is citizens fearing the penalties that we levied because of all the evidence that's being collected. And of course, there's an active and a passive. Feedback. The passive feedback is through the app, uh, the citizen app, in case people have installed, so it's totally off. The active feedback is when the waste goes there and you know actually tells people uh, that this is how um, you should be uh, segregated. So uh, this is 
to me and uh, this was some of the setup that we had so we were able to you know get these bins for organic waste and two separate uh, separate collection vehicles one for the recyclables and so you can see there was just one bin of recyclables uh, at the end of the project so this is how our setup was so um, we were shortlisted for a number of funding opportunities but i think uh, we couldn't make it beyond the final so but uh, thanks to if and uh, yv you have given a chance to present our work at the uh, if our work conference that happened last year so that's my contact details guys in case someone would like to you know discuss about implementation in your location or you know what we'll discuss further about what what we have done uh, we are going to second implementation of our app shortly in fact start uh, this coming month and that's happening in a slightly smaller with that just out in bangalore so uh, we are up for implementation so we want to uh, you know do uh, there's, a, there's a, a pricing model that uh, it works out to inr uh, it is a inr 9 per household per month for the first two months and then, uh, beyond that it's uh, inr 3 per household per month so we can you know talk about it if you guys get that. please let me know i hope you found this uh, presentation uh, for you know spending time on a lazy saturday afternoon thanks so much joining guys thank you vishwas it was great as always thank you so much uh, nina could you unmute ali as well and for everybody else you can just pitch in your questions uh, in the chat because when we online everybody there is a lot of noise in the background so just to avoid that you can just type your questions so we have a lot of question for you vishwas <laughs> as always okay, yeah so i'm just going to start with my own so what are the prerequisite for to for this project if, if someone is interested to implement in their country or city so are there certain prerequisite to uh, to know the feasibility yeah, yeah uh primarily we have an existing door to door collection system in place uh, and uh, that's all you need uh, if you have that uh, putting up our qr codes can be done probably on bin it so can be handed out to individuals or probably tag to gates or doors so it's scalable anywhere in individual apartments gated communities any any sort of setup so but there should be a door to door collection system in place and some willing to adopt this uh, system mm -hmm. all right and uh, was there sort of any training provided to the waste collectors you know they have to take pictures and then read the customers and everything right right so uh, i'll quickly show on the screen Uh, our app is all about you can color code, right? So it's very easy to create waste collection on that front. So you can see that there's a tick mark here, there's a delete symbol here, there's a back. So we we made it as you can color coded as possible. So it's very easy to train the uh, uh, uneducated as well. But I think they are better off at using smartphones than us these days. Okay. Um. So you mentioned that it, it it's worked as a two way feedback. So so far, what sort of feedback or complaint have you received from the customers? Uh, yeah, I think uh, from the customers we've received feedback that you know the waste collectors haven't collected waste. So that is something that uh, we need to take up. And apart from that, I think uh, people have been complaining about bad quality segregation uh, that uh, rate that they've been given. which is owing to their tenants or something of that sort so i think complaint is primarily um, you know more of just uh, appreciation for the waste collector effort but then uh, there's a collection log uh, you know system as well so people can probably yeah they can provide uh, you know um, the kind in multiple categories across uh, uh, the app Which was sorry, my chat's not working for some reason. Ah, uh, what I didn't pick up was so you're collecting and segregating. Ah, uh, who's your end sort of customer? Are you sending this or selling these segregate waste to scrap dealers? Ah, uh, where where is your sort of end process for this? Is this going to the uh, municipalities? Is it going to scavengers? Is it going to the dump site? Is it going to recycling? Charlie, I'll fill you in on that. So right now, we, for a pilot stage, we have this as a privatized collection model, and okay. we aren't dealing. So at least for the pilot, I know where the waste, uh, the, uh, the end uh, point of the waste uh, was for different categories because yeah. the person uh, here, you know, right? 
he is a drive is collect a profit himself so he handled the drive is uh, right so he had a biogas plant where uh, that was operational and the was an organic based compact that was coming in so all the organic based uh, went to biogas plant and the okay. phase of course went to a landfill so we we did trace it but we don't exactly collect data on that because uh, for what reasons we, this is limited tech we've been able to uh, build limited funding that we got so, no no that's fantastic it's some yeah. really good work yeah. to be honest Uh, so someone has asked about the financial model and who are the main stakeholders who contribute in the decision making in this whole process all right okay so share? the finance right so actually uh, frankly guys it's been uh, you know a real struggle going off trying to pull off this job and uh, my other job but why i'm still as account my other job is because there is not much of a business model in this but definitely the data does have a lot of value for those who want it uh, what happens is with data there is a lot of transparency that's brought so the municipality and those people uh, i mean those uh, municipal officials uh, don't really want this because there's a lot of corruption uh, in the system and uh, that would mean a lot of in their uh, pockets so that's something i uh, i feel is a challenge where people uh, don't want to adopt this for such reasons mm-hmm. and so we haven't really been able to uh, identify a business model after 200 years now okay perfect so, yeah, yeah. And, and i think i missed other questions sorry yeah there are so many so someone yeah. has asked that uh, in organic waste are there any cook waste like how do you train them the customers or how do you explain to them like we need to segregate and everything yeah i think what you can see here is all uh, you know it's a mix of cooked and cooked uh, un- uh, it's a mix of processed and unprocessed food so it, it's uh, it, it's a green bin uh, you know it's ideally a green bin or it can be a plastic bin without a plastic bin so uh, we we don't uh, distinguish between process and unprocessed here uh, but all of them just go to the biogas plant at least went to the biogas plant to pile it say but uh, how do we force them to segregate or how to segregate by providing these ratings and then uh, the way when they're taking photographs right that itself some mm-hmm. uh, something that induces a lot of fear in people's mind that you know there's some evidence that's being tracked that could be okay so it's it's more of a peer pressure thing psychology that they, they see themselves being rated on the app and then they... right 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 uh, so that, that's what i showed in the video as well for uh, we have a lot of slides to skim through so this this was a, oh, i'm sorry i'm not sure what happened to the media but so, so yeah it's sort of fear factor and also you know the active feed active and passive feedback from the collectors mm mm-hmm. So yeah, here's the graph that I'm showing you, the community standing graph. So you can clearly see that household 60 is influenced 58 and 59. Okay. Okay. So um, there is any other question? Okay. Yeah, you mentioned about something that through it you also sort of monitor or track illegal dumping site. How does that work? So you can see here that uh, we have each each of these household geo tags, right? Uh, each of them have a, a latitude and longitude coordinate. So based on that, and also on the citizen app, there is an option for there is a provision for people to report that spots. So. Yeah. So report a black spot. So based on proximity, mm-hmm. so when you are reporting black spot, there is a geo tag for that as well. So based on proximity to those households which are not handing out waste, so that is those yellow spots around and proximity to you see yellow spots around here. 
and yellow spots can be of individual categories as well. so it's like this each wedge of uh, the represents uh, different categories this is and this is supposed to represent a uh, reject waste so across individual categories uh, and say suppose these people haven't handed out organic waste are they probably feeding it to a cow nearby we don't know but that could still lead to a black spot so based on this and the geo tag of the black spot we try to identify this okay yeah that's perfect so also they are interested to know how much do you charge the customers for the service yeah uh, right now we didn't charge the customer anything because uh, we did it as a pilot but uh, moving forward if we looking at a collection model i think it should come in just with the price of the regular collection uh, it, because what we charge is maximum of 3, 3 rupees per household uh, inr 3 per household per month for uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh, so, so i think that is uh, you know not not too much cost in comparison to Uh, say 80 uh, IR 80 per household month for the collection. So it would be most likely padded with, uh, and for those operators who want to use it uh, beyond uh, for the first, uh, I think one year we will be charging, and on that it shall be free. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all so far. Uh, yeah, I have a question for Ali now. Uh, Nina, could you unmute Ali? Ali, can you? Uh, are you able to? I'm not sure. Yeah, we should uh, one more for you. Um, um, yeah, someone is asking like average collection of organic per person. Uh, what's the trend you have found? In Pakistan. In Bangalore. In Bangalore I'm sorry, yeah. guys. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. We don't have uh, uh, at least we somewhere don't have data on the quantity of waste. We didn't want to focus on that, but. we don't have anything of that sort but yeah, i think it is average of uh, 0.5 to 0.5 uh, per household per, per day uh, yeah so so that that's an interesting point so you don't weigh the waste it's just the pictures and then there's more digitalization of data right, right? we do, yeah our origin was at the hackathon was a wireless weighing scale so we do a prototype of that as well so probably share a, uh youtube link to it uh, we, didn't, we didn't get funded to do a pilot with it so we couldn't we weren't able to track that data okay perfect maybe i think that's something i can later look into uh um, sure, sure, yeah sure. for ali are you are you able to listen yeah yeah i am yeah so i was interested to know like according to your experience what are the major like factors you think that are not like able or restricting pakistani companies or whatever to like have a baseline data or like set up a data information center somehow so there is one agency called urban unit that's got um very good input and data and they've mapped out uh, lots of the cities um and places in pakistan uh the issue with the data in pakistan is that to be honest um there's just not too much attention being paid towards the industry um so that's been the issue with data and the regularity of collecting data in pakistan um again has to start with the authorities um uh, somebody has to pay for the collection so there's lot dp uh world bank um and our funding data collection and they help Pakistan with such projects but the government hasn't really can you hear me the government really hasn't made that much an effort to um to collect such data up until now uh with the waste management companies uh again the mainly the thing is that organic waste isn't directly valuable unless you have something like waste energy projects um or you have scientific landfills etc so the structure and the planning hasn't been done appropriately uh the waste that is valuable which is um can hear the well i think that's something with the system maybe nina can look into um yeah if you anybody if you have any more question you can um email me 
so I can like forward them to the presenter and maybe they, later I can uh, answer you as well. Also, in the end, I will share the minutes here, so anybody if missed out, they can like have a look at the summary. Also, this will be like available as a recording too, so you can like always look back and listen to everything so far. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Ashwari. It was like great having you. So so much to learn from, and I think I'll get back to you later too. And I think today that's all. We're gonna have you also already ten minutes over our time scale. Thank you, everyone. Nina, do you have something to say in the end? Uh, yeah, okay. Just when you still have some questions, we will send you out the presentations and there are the contacts of the speakers, so you can just drop the email and like for the networking or if like you have that? some extra, yeah. extra questions. So, and thank you very much, everyone. And thank you very much, Ali and Vishwas and Shiza. Thank you very much for organization. It was really great. Thank you. Hope that answers your question. Um, thank you so much, guys. I uh, hope you have a fantastic time over the weekend, and hopefully connect soon. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your time and sharing everything. It was so great. And thank you, Vishwas, for 